Hello, I'm Angela Sterling, and this is the White Room Chronicles set on Café dans le Nord-Est d'Angleterre. Fantastic. <laughs> Hello, Café, c'est délicieux. So, I'm Angela Sterling, I'm um, from Stanley Born and Bred. I um, used to be called Parker. My mum and dad are over there, so if I giggle, they're going to put me off. Um, I know they are. <laughs> My dad's a complete joker. <laughs> so. Yes, he is. That was Joker Paul. Um, so <laughs> I've I lived in Stanley right away from when I was teeny weeny. We moved from different houses, but always in Stanley. Um, and kind of went to the local schools, um, everything like that. But when I left school, I don't know why this happened. <laughs> I can't even remember. My mum might be able to tell you differently. But I was a proper homebody. Never wanted to move away. Always wanted to stay at home. And then I just suddenly got it in my head that age 18 I would go to Paris. <laughs> um, and off I went. Uh, it was before the internet um, and Skype and all of that kind of stuff. And they employed me to work as an au pair for a little five-year-old boy. And I think had they had a chat with me on Skype, they might have changed the mind because I went away and he had a crack and Geordie accent. Um, <laughs> but it was it was a really lovely experience. So I worked for that family for a little bit, but we didn't really get on too well. And I moved to another family where I looked after an 11 year old little girl and I lived right in the centre of Paris. And that's where I kind of had taken all the theory of languages at school and um, just became fluent and had a lovely time. So I came back but didn't come home yet. So I had all my childhood at home and then um, went away, came back, went to study in Scotland where I stayed for 10 years, believe it or not. Um, during that time, I had like little stints overseas as well. So I had another year in Paris. I had some time in Switzerland, a bit of time in Berlin, um, but really was based in Scotland. But I don't know, the North is just a special place. And I think when you're from here, you just always feel that pull. Um, so I moved home as quick as I possibly could, basically. Um, and I think that um, moving away at such a young age has done quite strange things because I'm always dying to move on to the next adventure and, and see somewhere else or maybe get a job somewhere else. I'm always, I've always got itchy feet. But when I'm away, I just feel that pull for home. It's a bit odd and it's totally unsettling. <laughs> but um, I wouldn't have it any other way. So. After 10 years away, I um, moved back home and I actually got a house about two streets away from where I grew up, <laughs> um, down in South Stanley and um, that's where I had my babies um, and yeah, still really, really proud to, to live up here and now run a business up here as well. well. I was a secondary school teacher so I started my career up in Scotland in a high school um, and I just loved it. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely loved it. Then when I came back here, um, I was working quite far up the road in Ashington, but that was a middle school. So in my career, I started quite old with the kids and then gone younger and younger and younger. So I went high school, middle school, then we moved um, overseas and I was teaching in a primary school as well as a secondary school. And then even in the primary school, I started to teach them younger and younger and younger. Um, so. And that's kind of what, what prompted the business because I had my teaching experience and expertise. I had my time as an au pair to think about when I was teaching, you know, the kids English. Um, and it, it was kind of, it was just putting all of that together into a nice little bundle to start my own business. And that's where it was born. It was lovely. My business is Lingo Tot and we teach kids languages. And um, the kids are, can come along from birth. My youngest one was about five days old. I've had loads of kids come at five days old, so if there's anyone out there who wants to come and beat the record, I'll be d delighted to speak to you. So from right the way from birth up to the end of primary school at age 11. And as a business, we teach French, German, Spanish, Mandarin and Arabic, and a little bit of English as a foreign language if it's needed as well. It all came about really from, obviously I, was, I used to be a teacher, and then I started my own family. Um, and. It was quite hard to leave teaching at the time because I was the Labrador puppy of teachers. <laughs> um, I absolutely loved it. I was not a moaner or a groaner. I just went into school every day and absolutely loved it. Full of enthusiasm. So it was quite hard to say goodbye to that. But 
I knew that when I had kids, I didn't want to go away and work full time and leave them in childcare. And childcare is really expensive as well. I couldn't afford it. So that's when I started the business. I never thought it would get big in the beginning. It was just more of a, a hobby business, if that makes sense. It was just supposed to be something small to keep things ticking over, keep my brain engaged, keep me excited until the kids went to school and I got a proper job. I ended up going on Dragon's Den. Um, it was, again, it was a bit of an accident. <laughs> I, I make, it makes it sound like everything happens as an accident. I am a planner. But um, Dragon's, the BBC phoned me up, and that's not me being big-headed at all. I think Dragon's Den, they run for about 14 episodes every series. They've got to have four entrepreneurs on each episode. Um, so that's a lot of bums on seats that they've got to fill. So I think they ring up small businesses and encourage them to apply. And at first I didn't need the money and I thought, no, I'm not going to do that. But the more I thought about it, the more I thought, oh, it'd just be good, a good chance to, to promote what we do. What I hadn't banked on, because I knew my business inside out, I knew the numbers, I knew it would be fine. But I forgot to take into the account that I'm really, really soppy. <laughs> um, and there was a little bit of, um, oh, yes, you should have known that you were going to cry, Ange. So I was petrified of that going on air. <laughs> because you, they show you on TV for 15 minutes, but I was actually in there for well over an hour, and you're not sure how they're going to edit it, um, and they don't tell you if you're actually going to be on the TV till two weeks before the show goes out. So I spent, it was filmed in the April, and it went out the following February, so I spent pretty much a year panicking about would I look like a crying wreck when it went out. <laughs> After Dragon's Den, it was... Um, it was really interesting. Um, the, there was obviously an, a, a flurry of activity and a flurry of interest around it. Um, but what I've found since then, it's not so... It's more that it has le legitimised the business in people's minds. Even though I knew the business was solid and everything before then, it seems like the appearance on Dragon's Den has got everyone thinking, ah, she, she was on Dragon's Den and good business that now it, it just seems to have almost given the business a pat on the head <laughs> um, and so we people are always interested to ask about it. it's always a good talking point and I did go against their advice and open a business in Dubai I, I love operating a business in the northeast and um, that well, it's just home isn't it and everyone's really lovely but I don't think that you need to be based in London at all to run the business. I mean, as I said, I started the business with teeny children, so even getting from Stanley to Newcastle for a meeting was hard, you know, so I had to come up with ways to do everything remotely in the first place. But that's actually helped the business because it, it means that people can be anywhere in the world and they can, they can take on a franchise anywhere and it works because we're so set up to do everything remotely. But... I'm really passionate about employing local people, using local services. So, for example, we all of our suppliers are all in the northeast, and they send things out across the country. So, I have this lovely little songbook and CD that we use, like that. And it's dead canny. It's got all the actions in. This is when my dad should come up, really. Well, we do this, and so we, we teach the kids um, how to sing, but they have to have an action to go with the song. So they're not just listening to the music, they have to join in. So um, I'll do a rendition, but I think you should be over here, Dad. <laughs> you've, got to, you've got to help us, and you've got to just, you just do the actions. Are you ready? Avec les mains, right. Bonjour, bonjour, je me présente. Bonjour, bonjour, salut. Voici ma tête, voici ma tête. Bonjour, bonjour, salut. There you go. Yeah. <laughs>